is an example of using B21 Task Planner to create a Microsoft Live Simulator flight plan. Um, and it's particularly suited to VFR flights and in particular, the kind of flights that gliding pilots uh, like to do. Microsoft Flight Simulator flight plans always start with an airport, end with an airport. And uh, what we need to do for gliding flights is those, each of those intermediate waypoints have to be entered as user waypoints so that we can name them appropriately and we can set altitudes on them and that kind of thing. We, you know, we need to do, we need to know that and Microsoft sort of mucks around with that. So uh, the only tricky bit, there's no airport database inside this uh, application. And but you do want to start with an airport. And basically, as I zoom in here, I'm going to start at Mifflin, see where that thing's labeled red. On oh, the basic idea of adding waypoints, by the way, let me zoom out a little bit, is you just click. So I'm going to click there, add a waypoint, click there, add a waypoint, go up to there, add a waypoint. Maybe go across to here, add a waypoint. And then back to there. There you go, that's created a, that's created a flight plan. But we want the first one and the last one. Um, here's the waypoints list on the left is updating all the time, we're adding waypoints here. And you have this concept of a current waypoint, which is whichever one is highlighted in yellow. You see that say waypoint zero is white, yellow is waypoint four, this is waypoint four is current. If I click on waypoint zero, then that one goes yellow. And the key point about the current waypoint, if I make waypoint one the current waypoint, these menus, is if I add a waypoint by clicking, it's always added after the current waypoint. So if I click there, it's going to be added between these two waypoints. Let's make it Jackson Corner over there. Okay, so I added that waypoint between those two. So when I created this task in the beginning, I just kind of went click, 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 because I added them in order. Actually, technically, what it was doing was adding a waypoint after the current waypoint, and the current waypoint was always the one I just clicked on before which was the most recent one. So it kind of handles both use cases of so just incrementally adding waypoints is super quick. Or you can always go back if you want to add one between waypoints. Whoops. If you want to add one between waypoint naught and waypoint one, I'll click on waypoint naught. Let's see, I want it to be over here. Boink. There you go. And it added it between waypoint naught and waypoint one. So if we go back to look at this airport here, the sky vector button it's potentially handy. Personally, I know what the ICAO code is for that airport. It's Mifflin County and the ICAO code is KRPL. Um, but just as a bit of a helper to look that up is I've linked to SkyVector. When you click on that, it opens a new tab. It's not really part of this application, except I've preloaded into it this information, which lines it up pretty much exactly with where we were when we we're on this map. So see, um, if I zoom in, if you can read that now, Mifflin County Airport is highlighted. That is in the middle of this map, and there it is there. And where it's displaying the name of the airport, uh, brackets RVL, you've got to stick the K in the front of it to make it I. I think that's the I bit of ICIO. It's KRVL. Uh, quite often you kind of know these things anyway, it's not a big deal. Um, Something else you can do in Sky Vector um, is let's okay, we know it's KRVL or it's Mifflin County, it doesn't matter which one you do. Go into airports here by clicking on that icon. I will type in KRVL and it's going to take me straight to Mifflin County Airport. Okay, I could have typed in that Mifflin County would have found it. I just wanted to shortcut it by not getting a search list. There is more than one airport with the name Mifflin in the name. And there's two, in fact, and they're pretty much next to each other. Um, and this is showing us the runways. So there's runway zero, so there's only one runway, and it's zero six at one end and two four at the other. Okay, so um, back here, say we had a waypoint here, but we want to make it an airport. At the moment, it's a user waypoint. To make it an airport waypoint, I shall add KRPL um, to um, the ICAO. And I'll add zero, zero 06 would point us to the northeast. No, won't, will it? Yes, yes, it will. Runway 06. Okay, so that's set. Um, then we can add the additional waypoints, which I could do here. I'll say, okay, here's a waypoint. 
um, it's going to be it's not an airport I don't want it to be a airport you only want the beginning and end to be an airport you do not want to put even if it is an airport in between just click it don't put the ICAO code just give it a name which can be the ICAO code if you want but don't fill in this box here and that means it will not be put into the flight plan as an airport which means MF Microsoft Flight Simulator won't mess with it before it actually goes into your, into your aeroplane so Here's an example where on this waypoint, I might want to give it a radius of, let's say, 1,000 meters. 500 is what I would use as the default. Um, and you'll see uh, this box recognizes the changes whenever you select a different box inside it or you close it. It doesn't matter which one those you do. There you go. So it's drawn a um, one kilometer circle around that waypoint. Um, OK, now at this point, I'm actually going to speed things up slightly by dragging and dropping. So I could reset this when you when you drag and drop onto the page that I am just dragging and dropping a flight plan into this drop zone on the left here that does actually reset the page and then load this flight plan which is uh, from someone called Paddy who's been I've been exchanging emails with him as he's been getting the grips with flying the S33 and getting the hang of how do you actually create flight plans for it and this is an example of the kind of flying plan typically you will get out of a generic flight plan, i.e. you know the kind of things where you put the waypoints in. And it's not entirely it's, it's not ideal for soaring. There is the task on there, we're taking off a KRVL, waypoint one, waypoint two, waypoint three, and then back. But here's examples of what you might want to do to change it to make it even more suited um, to flying and gliding. And the first thing um, we might want to do is if I select the first waypoint, it's my current waypoint, I am going to add a different waypoint. Let's say I'm going to put it here and call it Mifflin Start. Okay, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what you call it, but it's importantly, it's not an airport. I shall give it a maximum altitude of 4,000 feet. We say there's a 4,000 foot height limit on the start. And I'm going to tick the start box. Okay, and it is saying, okay, that's going to be recognized as the start of the task. It, uh, my program's using a default for how big do you make. This is technically the radius of the start zone. You have to cross through this line. I'll make it smaller. Let's say there's a 1,000 meter radius there. Okay, so that's the start zone. And so you see now we've got uh, KRVL is the departure airport. We've got Mifflin Start and this like ST in between brackets here says it's been recognized and it's drawn the start. Here's a clue, it's, been, it's drawn the start sector on it. It's the start. Um, we're gonna go to each of the waypoints in turn. We don't need to change these much. Waypoint one, we're just gonna give it a 500 meter. Oops. Uh, turn point radius typically um, I don't think in a competition I've flown, we've never had a high limit or a high maximum or a high minimum on turn points, apart from whatever the um, uh, airspace control says. Um, in other words, if you want to get high before you go around this one and you're kind of low when you go around the next one, that's not typically a big deal. So anyway, all I've done is added a turn radius. This one, you can see here, it was entered in the original flight plan as a airport probably using the Microsoft um, flight planner and it's given an elevation of 10,000 feet. Oh, that's reminded me something else I should be doing. Um, we don't want it to be an airport because Microsoft Flight Simulator really messes around with what altitude is it at. Um, Microsoft treats the flight plan as a thing to be fed to the autopilot, not to be something with useful information for the pilot. And it makes up all these altitudes about what altitude does it think you should be as you go around that waypoint. And that's where the 10,000 feet came from. We want to put in a um, accurate altitude. And by the way, what I'll do is up update this waypoint elevation. If you watch that number in there, there you go, 1470. And what's happened is this flight planner has gone off to a internet service, got the altitude of that latitude longitude, brought it back and put it in in feet. Okay, if you leave this, as a airport, Microsoft Flight Simulator will throw the height away. It, it will generate its own height inside the simulator 
according to what it thinks the autopilot should be doing to going up there and it just confuses everything. So what we want to do is say, don't be an airport, take the ICA IO code off. Uh, and in fact, if we zoom in on this thing, this is, I think, on Altoona. Yeah, there you go. Altoona County Airport. So I'm actually going to change the name. Altoona County. It doesn't matter what the name is. I could have left it as K-A-O-O. -O, um, but hey, might as well change it. And at the same time, I could have a radius of 500 meters. Okay, so scrolling out with uh, this waypoint. This is another airport, N74 Pine something. I'm guessing from memory. Penn's, Penn's Cave Airport. Okay, so I'm going to drop the ICAO code because we do not want it to be an airport. And I'm actually going to call it Penn's Cave, not that it matters. And that's what we would know it as, you know, as we fly around, fly around there. Um, and that altitude is interesting. I don't know where that came from. Let's say I update that one. Yeah, 1270 is the correct altitude for it. Again, I'm going to give it a radius of 500 meters. Okay, and updating the altitudes of individual waypoints is working, but who knows, I might forget. Let's have a look. Way P1, waypoint 1 is 8815. That's not correct. You can just hit this update elevations button and it will simply update all of them. So you'll see KRVL 819. There's no definitive height for an airport. You know, you're going to see that height change, but it only had changed by a few feet. And it's not as if the airport altitudes are really that accurate. So watch this. We'll do update all the elevations. There you are. That, that got updated to 804 by this particular database. It just determines where in the field they stick the stick in the ground. Um, so all those are now accurate heights. Uh, nevertheless, um, if one of these intermediate wear points was specified as an airport, that would trigger Microsoft to throw that elevation away and use something it generated itself. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do is the finish line. We haven't actually set a finish yet. And in the same way I set a start that was separate from the, uh, the takeoff and landing airport, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to set the finish. At the end of the runway, I'm going to give it a radius of 1,000 meters. I've forgotten something, and I'm going to check the finish box. Okay, so to finish this task, you've basically got to cross this line somewhere from there to there. Uh, in fact, you can successfully finish this, is true in general, that you can fly around it and go in like this, and that still counts as a finish, but you'd be, it'd be kind of a strange thing to do. Okay, so that is it. Um, created a pretty decent task and if you're flying the AS33 but this will be true of other gliders it will recognize all that information and uh, there isn't an easy way to show it on the screen here but those heights like the maximum in a, the if you know, remember on the start we set a maximum altitude the start is a height limit um, in what oops. clicked and added a waypoint by mistake. Um, the nav instrument in what will become one point, the 1.1 1 .1 release of the AS33 will recognize those height limits and will warn you in the in the cockpit uh, whether, you, um, whether you've made the start. If you're too high, it won't register it as a start. At the, at the moment, it recognizes, um, it's got a default of 300, 400, 500 meters for each waypoint, but it will actually pick it up from this information in the task. So all you've got to do is now download flight plan and uh, click that button and the flight plan has appeared here in downloads.